The images are shocking. Australia set ablaze on an unprecedented scale. The collision of the country's most extreme drought and its most extreme temperatures. So extreme heat in itself is a really underestimated risk to us. The fires are really easy to see how dangerous they are. But extreme heat is Australia's deadliest natural disaster. Record temperatures pose many direct threats to human health and the environment here. But it has also fueled a crisis in the ocean. It has impacts on our ecosystems, things like our Great Barrier Reef, uh, a lot of our marine wildlife is quite vulnerable to that heat. The Great Barrier Reef is an Australian icon, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It's the world's largest coral reef, equal in size to Japan. So massive, it's visible from space. Two million visitors come to this reef each year, generating six and a half billion dollars for the Australian economy. It's fused to the identity here, and it's dying. The health of the Great Barrier Reef is actually not so good. Um, in 2016 and 2017, we had very severe heat waves, so back-to-back -back heat waves in those two years. And over the course of the two years, we lost about half of all the coral present on the Great Barrier Reef. As its name implies, it's also a protector for the mainland and a source of life for its people. Almost the only food that some people can obtain is from the reef to feed their families and, and for, their, for their economies as well. Nearly 30% of all marine species live on, on coral reefs. There's a long list of, uh, of, of benefits that coral reefs bring to humans. But climate change is slowly devouring the reef. With climate warming, we see a gradual increase in temperature that can cause stress, but then also we see an increased frequency, intensity and, du and duration of these summer heat waves that are the biggest threat to coral reefs at the moment. As the temperatures increase, the oceans heat. Warmer waters causes corals to stress and could cause a mass die-off known as bleaching. If a reef goes through a mass bleaching event, then almost all corals on the reef will pale. Corals lose the algae that lives inside their tissue and gives them their color. And then if they cannot re-establish that relationship with the algae, algae, they will die. So you see quite a colorless reef. And that bleaching is usually followed by the loss of fish and other species that rely on the reef. An entire ecosystem could collapse. Australia has already warmed by one degree Celsius. The waters of the reef have warmed even more. Two-thirds of the reef have seen sea surface temperatures rise between two and three degrees Celsius above normal. Scientists fear the reef may see a third mass bleaching in the last five years. Doesn't really look good. I think we will continue to see a decline in, in coral reef, in coral cover, coral reef health. Bleaching events can happen quickly. Reef recovery is much slower. It probably takes between 10 and 20 years for a reef to recover from a, from a, a, a severe disturbance. And the problem now is that um, those major disturbances occur at a much higher frequency, so there's not enough time for the reefs to recover fully. Van Oppen is leading research to jumpstart this recovery, giving evolution an assist. So we use selective breeding. We are trying to develop methods um, to improve basically heat tolerance of corals. And we've had some very promising early results. Professor Van Oppen tells us her research gives her hope for the future of coral reefs, but stresses the need for climate change action if we want to save our reefs for future generations. Ultimately, we have to do something about climate change, climate warming, because if we don't address that in the long term, the reef will continue to decline. And that is a threat that really hits home. Over the last 30 years, the world has lost half of the ocean's corals, and Florida has not been spared. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The state of the Florida reef tract is dire. Um, we are losing corals at an unprecedented rate. I would suggest that for the first time in human histor history, uh, we are witnessing potentially the the loss of an ecosystem. The parallels are uncanny. We've had episodes of uh, climate change related uh, bleaching episodes that have caused corals to die off. We've had generally poor water quality that has fostered and promoted the growth of seaweeds instead of uh, corals. But Florida's reeling reefs have the insult of another climate change fueled culprit to contend with, stony coral tissue loss disease. What's unusual about this disease, it's probably the worst coral disease outbreak that's ever been recorded uh, anywhere in the world. This is a kind of the straw that breaks the camel's back. This is the, the last kind of uh, thing in a series of events that have happened for Florida's reefs. Like Australia, our reefs are our protectors and our providers. Reefs are the rainforest of the oceans. They're also a huge 
economic engine for us, tourism. People come here to fish, to go diving, to go snorkeling. All of that can be catastrophically wiped out just by one or two degree a rise in temperature. They actually protect our coastlines from storms. And in a situation in Miami where everybody's uh, worried about sea level rise, everybody's worried about storm surge, people in Miami Beach are particularly worried about coastal inundation, here's a situation where the natural resources are actually helping protect us from those threats, and yet we're not taking the ne necessary measures to protect them from the threats that we ourselves are creating. Like the Great Barrier Reef, our tract is part of our identity. Without the reefs, we don't have anything in the Keys. The reefs are everything. They're what the economy is based on. It's what people's livelihoods are based on. It's what you know people's social lives and, and memories and experiences are based on. And without the coral, no one's going to have those memories in the future. Each year, reefs generate an estimated $4.5 billion locally and account for 70,000 jobs. Unless you value your economy, your environment, you're not going to have it available to be sustainable in the future. And so all of those things that we take for granted that sustain our essentially tourist economy are going to be lost. Like Dr. Van Oppen, researchers here in Florida are trying their own assisted evolution approach, working year round to rescue and recover our reefs. So what we've started doing is with our corals that we grow in nurseries, we collect the spawn in the nursery, we bring it on land, we do the fertilization ourselves. Um, we rear the larvae and we settle them, and then we put them back in the nursery and, and outplant them. The efforts are showing promise. Thousands of corals are being saved and replanted. But if the oceans keep warming at unprecedented rates, it may not matter. I'm hoping that what's happening in Australia is a wake-up call to people, not just here, but around the world. For our kids, our grandkids, we'd like them to know what a coral reef is outside of a book. We are losing an e ecosystem on our watch, and we just can't allow that to happen. What does the future look like for corals if we do absolutely nothing as far as climate action goes? Curbing climate warming is critically important to try and save coral reefs. If we don't achieve that, there's very little hope for coral reefs.